Um, it's impossible at any time of the year, but especially now, to ignore what's going on in, in the world outside. And as, and as people try to figure out what's going on with the, with the Mueller investigation of, uh, of Russian in involvement in last year's election, people toss out terms like, well, it's the beginning of the end, or it's the end of the beginning, or some such thing. And, and of course, nobody knows which. And I just keep hoping that in terms of University of Illinois football, it's the, it's the end of an age. Um, this is the first weekend in three months that I haven't been focused on an Illinois football game. And I gotta tell you, it's been a rough season, okay. They won only two games out of 12, and those were when Patricia and I were in China. So I haven't seen them for quite a long time. Um, and, 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 and that should be cause for discouragement, but you know, when I was a sophomore at Illinois, it was the first time Illinois ever went a complete season without winning a game. I clearly didn't go there because of their football power. But, 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 two years later, my senior year, they went to the Rose Bowl and won. They won the Rose Bowl in 1964. According to my clock, that's going to be 54 years from January. <laughs> but at any rate, at any rate, at any rate, so I'm hoping it is the kind of the, the end of an era, the close, what we'll call later an eschaton, and that things will be looking better. But, but the reason I wanted to mention my sophomore year in Illinois was that was the first time I actually engaged in Bible study. Now, Illinois, like Arizona, Arizona State, are state schools, and so there, there were no religion courses that one could take through the university. But we were permitted to take up to four credit hours, although they didn't count against the grade point average, of courses offered by one of the religious institutions that was around campus. And so I registered for a course. I believe it was called Through the Gospels to Jesus, because that's the name of what the book we use as a text offered by the pastor at the Disciples of Christ Church right at the edge of the, of the engineering campus. And that was where I was first exposed to the idea of the synoptic gospels. Synoptic meaning seen together. And you've heard me talk about this over and over again. Uh, our ch the church calendar is, 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 is three years, A, B, and C, but each year being based on one of those three synoptic Gospels. And the theory is, the scene together, the theory is, is quite simply that the writers of Matthew and Luke, in addition to some a few sources that they had that they had to themselves, used the gospel according to Mark, and they have hypothesized, and I think reasonably so, I think the hypothesis is almost incontrovertible, a hypothesized lost source of sayings of Jesus called Q. Uh, the sayings of the Sermon on the Mount, for instance, come from this thing, the Q. But in becoming oriented to the gospel according to Mark, I got to learn my first 25 cent theological word, eschatology. Okay. Now, eschatology and the, uh, the eschatology and its related word, eschaton. Eschatology is concerned with the end times. It's either the study of, the concept of, a theory of the end times. And as I say, I hope for Illinois, the end of losing times occurred and something new will begin. <laughs> well, why are you talking about end times in Advent? I mean, Advent is a time that's kind of like human pregnancy, right? Why are you talking about an eschaton? I mean, eschaton can mean the end of all time, or it can mean the end of a current age. But it's really not inappropriate to a pregnancy, I suppose. Um, I think some of you at least are parents, for parents. You experienced an eschaton when your first child was born, because the age of sleeping nights ended. Uh, 
The Gospel of Mark is very concerned with eschatology. The passage we read today from the Gospel of Mark, and by the way, the, the problem with having Mark, I might have put this in the newsletter, I don't remember, Heidi, is that Mark does not have a birth narrative. Mark starts with the baptism of Jesus Christ. So all of a sudden they say, John preached four sermons during Advent. You can't start with the baptism. You start with the end of the world, which is what Mark was writing about. But that's also at play in, in, in the epistles of Paul. Now those of you who've been here over the last month know that as we read 1 Thessalonians, which is the oldest book in the New Testament, that Paul expected the the eschaton, the end of the world, to occur during his lifetime, or at least the lifetime of people that were there. When Jesus comes again, Paul and the writer of Mark believe that's the end of the world. And Jesus' coming is, of course, the issue of Advent. Well, what then are we to make of what we're doing Advent. Um, it's a period of waiting, but is it waiting for an ending? And if so, of what? Or is it waiting for a beginning? And if so, of what? If it's a period like pregnancy, what is being formed? And must we wait? Those are questions I would like us to deal with on sort of a spiritual journey to Bethlehem. And I don't, I don't think I can fill three more Sundays with that, but I definitely next Sunday want to talk further about, well, that's all great historically and theologically, but what does it mean in my life? What does Advent and Christmas mean in my life for me personally, for each of us as individuals. The spiritual journey. The Jesus in Mark talks about setting out on a journey. And as we set out on the journey, I, I can't help but, but draw us back to, uh, to words I use from the most unlikely of sources for using communion. Uh, the German composer Richard Wagner when he said May the meal be for us what it was for Jesus. May the meal be for us today a bit of spiritual nourishment to energize us for the spiritual journey that we make as we go through Advent on our way to that, that manger in Bethlehem. For on the night before he died,